Hi guys, Katrina here, the Zebra Wheelie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am visiting the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. Now this museum is massive. I think it's literally 170 odd acres across and uh, it's in two parts. So I will have to do another video on the Folk Museum side of this. Please join me. They provide uh, wheelchairs and scooters for rent or free of charge. More Titanic memorabilia. And again, because of social distancing, there are markings on the floor all throughout the museum. All of the old trains. Everything you see here in this museum is in working order. I believe that green train there they use every now and again for uh, tourist trips to. Uh, the local uh, resort towns here. As you can see it's on a massive turntable so that they can turn the whole thing around and point it back out the door again. And the door's uh, actually underneath where I'm sitting but it's good that they're restoring these trains. This train is absolutely massive and this was donated from the, the Republic of Ireland. Um, the sign on the wheel there is the train's name. It's Maeve. This museum has a rather intuitive ramp system throughout and you will see the second part of the ramp system later on. The thing I like about this museum is they have platforms like this, which means that you can get up and see the inside of the trains. Although the trains themselves are not wheelchair really accessible, but you can't have everything. Massive gap here, so I'm not going to get too close, but there's the driver's cab of uh, the number one train. This train had two classes. That's the first class cabin, and there's a guy sitting in there reading. And down here would have been where I would have been, this third class cabin. Or second class, if I'd only had two classes. But uh, it would have been totally open to the elements. There's another cab of a different train. In normal times they do usually allow children to climb into the trains but because of what's going on they're not allowing uh, children to do this. This is a mock-up of Strabran railway station and people would change trains there to go onwards to Letterkenny which is in County Donegal. This is a copy of the Ulster Railways Act and underneath it is a map of the railways in the whole of Ireland including Northern Ireland. Here is a diorama that tells the story of transport, the story of power and the story of the railways. Travel before the railways 
Uh, by 1800, Ireland had a number of stagecoach services operating between the main towns. The, the fares were beyond what most people could afford and large areas of the country were not covered. This gap in the market was filled by an Italian, Charles Bianconi. Uh, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly, uh, who began a national passenger network centred on Clonmel County Tipperary in 1815 using long cars. By 1843 his fleet of about 100 long cars was travelling nearly 4,000 miles a day, serving 140 stations. Uh, that guy developed a series of cars starting with the common jaunting car pictured in this case here and increasing in size to the Thun McCool, a four wheel long car pulled by four horses which could carry up to 20 passengers while Bianconi's long cars or Bian's were known for their comfort many enjoyed the social element of travelling in the group And there's a traditional jaunting car that was uh, performing a service for the Royal Mail as well. And that model there is a model of the Hibernia. Uh, it's based out of uh, West End Road Station in Dublin. The SS Greenor. There's some of the controls for the railway lines. A railway signal control box. There's the big train that was seen from upstairs, and over here is the door that they opened to let it out and in. I think it was last year they had a traveling exhibit uh, from Russia. They had a Soyuz rocket capsule. Uh, if you don't know what a, that is, it's the capsule that the cosmonauts and astronauts sit in while they're being launched to the, the ISS from Russia. Uh, that's normally moved by railway and because this is primarily a railway museum they had all the equipment needed to move that so uh, they brought it here instead of uh, bringing it elsewhere. I don't think they still have it. Uh, I haven't seen anything about it. I would have liked to have seen it. Look at this little train. And the wee uh, goods cart that goes with it. Look at this carriage. No such thing as health and safety back in them days. Completely open. You could fall off of the of the of the train very easily. They have another exhibit on the Titanic. Uh, the Titanic is very popular here. A copy of the design plans for the Olympic and Titanic. Down she goes. Replica life jacket from the Titanic area. The tram of number 249 Belfast City Tramways. Even this was divided into classes. The top row was the, the bottom class and the 
uh, bottom one was more for the richer people. This horse-drawn fire engine and beside it is a horse-drawn tram. A hand-operated fire pump. Wouldn't fancy having to use that. There's a horse-drawn ice cream cart. There's an electric milk float. Uh, when I was growing up, they had the more of modern version of these, but uh, sadly these are no more because of the takeover of the supermarkets and things like milk being more readily available. An electric Ford Escort Royal Wheel Van. I'm sure the battery life on it was crap. So take that Tesla. We had uh, electric vehicles way before anybody. These are two double-decker buses. Uh, this one is a trolley bus, which was basically electric, but it ran on wires that were all over Belfast, really. Uh, recently, they have brought out more double-decker buses. They only had single-decker buses when I was growing up. A 1950s bus called The Last Bus. In this exhibit, they have uh, these little mock shop fronts. And that one's a hat maker. So this here is a Ford Mondeo, and it took part in the first ever attempt in the winter of 93 to 94 to drive eastwards over land all the way from, from London to New York. So fans of the Back to the Future films will recognise this car. This is a DeLorean. This was built in a place called Dunmurray, which isn't too far away from here. And there was a lot of controversy over uh, the owner of the DeLorean Motorworks. Uh, he basically got into trouble with the, the tax man here. And they put him out of business. Plus there was a some reports of him uh, being involved in things like drug smuggling and stuff. A difference uh, between it and the car next to it, isn't there? So they actually have two DeLoreans here, and this is the one that was up on blocks. They must have uh, repaired the other one and they're still trying to repair this one. But this is the one I was talking about in my other video where I was uh, driving down the country lane. They had to uh, test these cars on Northern Irish roads and uh, in order to do that to make it legal here they had to fix extra headlights to it as you can see. The insides of a DeLorean. I don't see the flux capacitor. <laughs> This is a Nobel 200, which uh, was a three-wheel car uh, that was built here in Northern Ireland in Newton Arts. Uh, there's a bit of a safety issue with three-wheel cars, uh, especially at this time, because the drive wheel, or the, the wheel that you could steer with, was at the front, and uh, it caused stability issues. But as you can see, this car here has uh, two wheels at the front and one at the back, which pretty much eliminated that. There was another car called the Robin Reliant that was infamous for tipping over, going round corners because its wheels were the other way around. Here's a mock-up of a garage cutaway model of the Rover SD1 that was built in 1976. The Amphi car, a car that doubles as a boat, that would be class. I don't think they still make these, but it would be class if they did. So this is the predecessor to uh, the Motability car. Now, as you know, if you follow this channel, 
I drive a mobility car that's been adapted to suit my needs. If I had been alive in the 1970s or 80s, I would have been given this instead. Thank God I'm alive today because this thing was not safe to drive. As you can see, it only has one wheel at the front and that makes it unstable. And to make matters worse, it's made of fiberglass and it has no roll cage. So if you ended up on your roof, you'd be basically dead. That's why they stopped making these. You can see it inside it there. It just has a pair of handle bars for to steer with. Uh, no pedals or anything. But the idea would be if the person would transfer into the seat there, fold up their wheelchair because they only had the folding frame chairs back then and put it in beside them with no way to secure the wheelchair, which is again very dangerous. There's no way in hell I would get into one of these. This car was made in 1980. This car gave disabled people freedom of the road and are probably more important, but I wouldn't treat my safety for anything really. It says here, if I zoom in here, it says this 1980 uh, three-wheeler has a fiberglass uh, body, sliding doors, uh, heater, seat belts and a fire extinguisher. It says there that uh, these cars were becoming unsuitable for use on the motorway uh, and on modern roads. They sometimes blew over or caught fire. The reason for the fitted fire extinguisher and they were underpowered and slow. In the 1980s it was realised that conventional cars could be adapted for special needs like mine and infinite cars were phased out. This one was used until 93. Yeah I think I'll stick with my adapted Corsa. Thank you very much uh, with its uh, roll cage. So unfortunately getting back out of the museum again was a bit more difficult but that was mainly because I had to push back up the hill again. I also had to ask a passerby uh, for help getting over this rather high curb. Uh, thank you very much if you're watching. That's something that they really need to sort out. Um, all right. okay. Thank you. No thank no you. Okay. Thank you now. Okay, yeah, I'm grand, thanks. So they do have a model railway here, but unfortunately it's closed. Oh well. Well, that's an invalid car, as they called it. Definitely did not look safe. Thank God I don't have to drive one of those. I hope you find that interesting and enjoyable. I certainly enjoyed making it. I give the, this museum an 8 out of 10 for disability access. That's only because of some of the, the access features that they have and plus it being an older building as well. But they do have ample disabled parking and everything else. I especially like the ramped platforms that they had uh, going into some of the trains, which meant that I could look inside. If you are coming here, uh, definitely make uh, it a day trip because you would need to spend a whole day in this place if you're planning to go uh, around both parts of the museum. As I said before, I will come back and look at the, the folk museum part. You have to book a ticket, as you do nowadays, but they do allow free entry for carers and for people who would need assistance to get around the, the place. But if you're on your own, please bring someone with you because it is quite difficult to get around outside. The indoors of the building itself is quite easy to get around and they have 
numerous interactive displays as well. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe by clicking below. And remember to hit the notification bell as YouTube does not notify you when I upload a video unless you hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.